As we did with our confidence interval estimates, we'll begin our study of hypothesis tests with the proportion. Let's look at the requirements. First, the simple the sample observations are a simple random sample. We've seen that requirement now many times. The conditions of the binomial are satisfied. Recall that um, a research involving proportions is a binomial distribution. Uh, let's look at those conditions. Fixed number of trials, outcomes in two categories, independent trials, and the probability of success is constant for all trials. So in a proportion you might be um, taking a, a survey, getting some research on the number of left-handed people out of a population, well, you would select your number of trials, your sample size n. Your outcomes are in two categories. Either the person is left-handed or they are not. The trials would be independent. One person's response to that question is not dependent on someone else's response to that question. And that the probability of someone being left-handed is a constant for that population. It's not changing as you're conducting your trials. So this is a binomial um, when we are conducting tests on proportions, as we said before when we were constructing confidence intervals uh, estimates for proportions. And finally, we have to have at least five successes and five failures to make this um, a worthy um, test. Uh, if, you, if you don't have five successes or five failures, then you pretty much have a, the um, entire sample is one response, um, and that would not really be much of much interest anyway. Okay. <clears throat> Let's look at the uh, test statistic for um, our hypothesis test for the proportion. Okay, the test statistic is a Z statistic as we've seen before. This is the Z distribution and it would be our sample proportion P hat minus our population proportion over the square root of P times Q over N. Okay, so that's the test statistic. And recall that we've talked about comparing for our hypothesis test the test statistic to the critical value. And that's a, a one way we make a decision and draw conclusions in a hypothesis test. It's based on the results of your test. As you can see, the p hat is involved. The p is what your proposed or claimed um, sample, uh, claimed population proportion is, of course, because P is the population proportion. Okay, a couple of things to note. When we test claims about a proportion, the traditional method, which is the compare your test statistic to the critical value, and if the test statistic falls in the critical region that is bordered by the critical value, we reject the null hypothesis. If it does not fall in that critical region that is um, marked by the critical value, then we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. So that's one method. And then the p-value method, which is comparing the p-value with alpha. The p-value is associated with the test statistic the probability associated with that. So there, there are two ways that we can make our decision and either one of these ways, will they will agree. These two ways will agree, will yield the same results. So um, what we will be doing, since we will be using the TI-8384 technology, is actually both. We will see each time that um, we, as we get the test statistic, compare that to a critical value, we'll have our p-value, We'll compare that to alpha, and those should always agree. So that's great. But one thing, other thing to note is I mentioned before that we can also use um, confidence interval estimates to make decisions in hypothesis testing. But when it comes to the the um, proportion, the confidence interval method is not equivalent to 
the traditional method and the p-value method and you may come up with a different conclusion. But we won't be using the confidence interval method um, as we proceed. It was mentioned before though that that is a possibility. Before we move on, we need to understand one more thing about testing a claim about a proportion. Under certain circumstances, such as those satisfying the three requirements above, a binomial distribution, which is what a proportion is, can be approximated by a normal distribution. So the normal distribution as an approximation to the binomial distribution. So let's illustrate this with an example. Flipping a coin is a binomial distribution. We have two outcomes. In this case, we're looking for heads, so we either have heads or we don't. Um, it can be shown that as the number of flips of a fair coin increases, the shape of a binomial distribution approaches a very smooth curve. The vertical bars here represent the probabilities of obtaining each of the possible 21 outcomes. Zero heads all the way up to 20 heads. The superimposed curve represents a normal distribution curve approximation for this binomial distribution. And as, a, as n, our sample size, increases, the fit of this binomial to the normal curve gets even better. Therefore, if the requirements are satisfied, we can use a normal distribution to approximate a binomial distribution.